Good evening. So happy to have all of you here and for all those who are joining us uh, uh, tonight through uh, virtual means. But again, uh, may we always remember why we are gathered here today. We're here to worship God the Father who planned out our salvation, God the Son who paid for our salvation in full, and God the Holy Spirit who brings this most wonderful news to us. And, and we, we're here to worship God the Holy Spirit who is the Lord and giver of life through the, the means of grace. So my question for all of you tonight is this. How do we worship God? You know, if I had asked my 7th or 8th graders, most people would say, well, we worship God because we, we come to church, we give Him some of our time, we give Him some of our talents, we, we, we pray to Him. But uh, there's so many different ways we worship our Lord. And that's throughout the entire week, uh, this next week. And one way we can worship and show our thankfulness to our gracious God is to love and to forgive our enemies. It's a hard thing, but uh, after uh, today, maybe you'll see, oh, it might become a little bit easier. So let us begin our worship tonight with our opening hymn, Love in Christ is Strong and Living. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent us his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, 
And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, keep your family continually in true faith, so that those who rely only on the hope of your heavenly grace may be protected by your mighty power. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. And our first lesson for today is recorded in Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 15. The story of Joseph and his brothers reveals how God can overcome evil with good. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God set me ahead of you. For two years now there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years there will be no plowing or reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and all you have. I will provide for you there, because five years of famine are still of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about about all the honor accorded to me in Egypt and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. 
Afterward, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Let us now continue with the psalm of the day. Our second reading for today is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 14 through 21. And Paul encourages believers living in a loveless world to demonstrate grace, forgiveness, and humility. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation.
And our gospel lesson for today is recorded here in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. And instead of offering others what they might deserve, Jesus calls us to show the same grace that has been shown to us. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Uh, Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you'll be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated for our hymn of the day.
The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen. Our text for consideration today is recorded here in Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 15, where we again read verses 14 and 15. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us now bow our heads in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is once uh, this pastor who had a small parish somewhere in the Midwest, and the small parish wasn't just surviving, it was actually starting to thrive. But then that one day, one of the parishioners came into the pastor's office and said, you know what, there is a certain member that is saying to everyone, I don't know if you've heard this, that she can actually talk with Jesus. And, well, the pastor said, well, you know what, like Jesus talking to us, like through word and sacrament? No, she says that she actually has a, a conversation with Jesus, and he kind of just brushed it under the rug and said, well, you know, you know, Margaret, you know, she's getting older and everything like that, and we all kind of lose it a little bit. Not a big deal. And then that was fine for a little bit, but then the next week another parishioner came in, then another parishioner came in, and then another parishioner came in. So now the pastor's going, well, I'm going to have to deal with Margaret. So I'm going to just call Mar Margaret in. And so Margaret came and sat in his office. And he said, Margaret, you know, I, I've heard through a lot of people that you actually have conversations with Jesus. Is that true? Yes. And she said, yes, it is. As she smiled at the pastor. You mean like an actual conversation back and forth like we're having right now? And she said, yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And so now the pastor's going, okay, well, it might, this might be a little problem. So he thought to himself, how can I get her to stop saying these things? So he thought to himself, he said, you know what, Margaret, since you have a conversation with Jesus, can you ask Jesus this one question? Sure, pastor. And as she continued to smile at him. And uh, the question is, ask him, what is that one specific sin that I did in my junior year of college that only I and him know about? Okay, Pastor, not a problem. And then uh, Margaret left, and a week went by, two weeks went by, and the pastor's going, oh, see, I guess I, I, I stopped that nonsense and everything. And, and he's uh, thinking that he has like the, the wisdom of Solomon, and he's actually getting uh, you know, pretty proud of himself. So he actually calls Margaret back into his office and says, Margaret... You know, did you have that conversation with Jesus? Oh, yes, Pastor, yes, I did, as he, she continued to smile. Well, did you ask him that question that I asked you to ask him? Yeah, yes. You know, so what was that one specific sin that I did way back my junior year of college? What, the, what did Jesus say to that? And she just looks at the pastor and smiles. He says he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember. Remember what our Lord told us through Jeremiah and also through the author of the Hebrews? He says this, For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. That's the gospel right there, right? Beautiful gospel. You see, he doesn't ignore sins, but he dealt with sins when he gave us his one and only son, Jesus. And Jesus came. He didn't come here just to make a partial payment. He made the full payment. He has forgiven us, and he remembers our sins no more. But there's so many other goodies, even in the Old Testament, trying to explain this to us. For it says this here in Psalm 103, verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. It's a beautiful, beautiful passage, isn't it? Let's see, if I just asked you, let's say I'm going to pick on maybe one or two. Uh, Eric Roden, can you just uh, read this section from your pew right now? Probably not. Maybe Dave Newman? Could you do that? Probably not, right? It's too far away. Okay, and we're only like, what, 25 you know, feet away from each other? If I move this all the way out to Division Street, I don't think any of us could even see that there's words on this, but if you took it all the way out to the coast of uh, California, of course you wouldn't even see it. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. Or as it says here in Micah, 
as well as Micah chapter 7, verse 19, he has hurled our iniquities into the depths of the sea. I don't know uh, how many uh, pairs of sunglasses I've lost up there in Eagle River, you know, over the boat. I probably lost maybe three or four really nice pairs, so that's why I only get cheap pairs now. Because if you're bowing down, more or less, just to put some gas in the boat and they, they fall in and everything. And I've looked many times for all these glasses, but if I'm like in the middle of the lake where it's around 25 to 30 feet deep, I'm not even going to try. Maybe if it fell in by the pier, I'll definitely look for them, but I've never found a pair. You know, so just imagine though, he takes our sins and the deepest part of all the oceans in the world, and recorded anyways, is 36,200 feet, or around roughly close to seven miles deep. You're not going to retrieve any of that, right? So again, God is just showing us He has removed our guilt and He remembers our sins no more. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And maybe you now some of you are saying there's now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Well, how can I be certain that I'm in Christ Jesus, Pastor? Well, have you been baptized? You're in Christ Jesus. He has covered you with his robe of righteousness. You are good to go. But you see, look at what we were. We were God's enemies. We hated God. He came and saved us yet, right? We continue to abandon him over and over again. We were dead in our sins, yet, out of his mercy, he fully forgave us all. So how do you say thank you? How do you say thank you to our gracious God? If he is here, I'm sure we'd embrace him. We'd probably have tears coming out of our eyes. Saying, I'm so happy that you're here. You did this all for me. But he's not here, you know, visibly yet. But a way we can say thank you is with how we treat others. Not just our neighbors, but those who we call our enemies. For it says this uh, in our second lesson in our gospel reading. We can thank him by blessing those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Or from our Lord's own words in our gospel lesson for today, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Have you thanked God lately with your attitude and actions, my dear friends in Christ? I don't know. God knows. But you know what? That's a hard question to say, no, I haven't. He knows that. And, and he's forgiven you. But let's also remember this. Our salvation is complete. Nothing's going to change yet. By his wounds we have been healed, but our, our work of sanctified living, that's always a work in progress. You know, uh, and I don't know if you've uh, ever looked at the Dow Jones, right? Over the course of 10 years, it's up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But, you know, over the course of time, it gets higher and higher and higher. That's usually how it goes. So with our life, as we are immature, we know what God has done for us. We, we have fully paid, he has fully paid for all of our sins. We know this, but over the course of life, we become more and more Christ-like. And these words that Jesus gives us today, they're a little bit harder to swallow. Love your enemies. Bless and do not curse. Maybe that's a little bit tougher. But today we see in our Old Testament lesson, that's exactly what happened. Joseph at first was immature, but over the course of time and over the course of a lot of testing, he saw and he forgave his brothers. But again, our, our uh, Old Testament lesson is more or less a, a perfect plot for a revenge movie, right? I think we all know and remember Joseph. Joseph in the coat of many colors. We also remember Joseph and all his dreams that he had. And I, I think one of the dreams he had, remember, when he, he came to his brothers and said, you know what, I had a dream. There was a sun, moon, and eleven stars, and they all bowed down to me. And yes, the 11 stars are all you, my brothers. You know, see, Joseph was Jacob's favorite 
But after he told him this dream, it's kind of funny because the next you know, part of God's word, the title goes like this. After telling them that they would all bow down before him, Joseph sold by his brothers into slavery. They didn't like what he had to say about them. They wanted to kill him. And so there is Joseph, sold into slavery, and on his way down to Egypt. I wonder how he would respond to the Lord's words that were given to us today. For the Lord came to him and said, Joseph, bless those who persecute you. What would his reaction be? Joseph, bless and do not curse. Joseph, live in harmony with one another. Joseph, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Joseph, love your enemies. Joseph, do not uh, do those uh, do do good to those who hate you. Joseph, bless those who curse you. Joseph, pray for those who mistreat you. I don't think you would have said right off, right? Yes, Lord, of course. But perhaps something like this: Are you crazy? My brothers just sold me into slavery. You want me to forgive them? The first chance I get, I'm going to kill them. That's probably more or less uh, his reaction would have been. But then we know the rest of the story, right? Joseph's brothers continued to live in the land of Canaan. And then Joseph, through many trials and, and hardships, finally finds himself to be the second in command of all Egypt. And then we remember there's a great famine in all of Canaan and throughout the whole world at that time, more or less. And so Joseph's brothers came down to Egypt because they had saved up so much grain for the entire world at that time. And so his brothers come to Joseph and they bow down before Joseph. And they didn't know it was Joseph because many years had passed already and he was in all his Egyptian attire. And so here's finally his time to get revenge, right? I've been waiting for this all my life. But instead we hear this from our lesson for today. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you've sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was God, it was uh, to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been a famine in the land and for the next five years there will be no plowing or reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. You can see for yourselves and so can my brother Benjamin that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded to me in Egypt and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping, and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. Do you have a hard time forgiving those who have wronged you? I just want you to take this time and maybe think of one individual that you've had the outs with. Maybe still have the outs with. Because God looks at you and says the same thing to you. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Live in harmony with one another. These are not my words. These are God's. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Our Lord's words from our gospel lesson, he says this to you, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Have you had a hard time forgiving someone? Have you had a hard time living in harmony with someone or maybe a group of people? Well, stop looking at them. Maybe that's your problem. You're looking at them and how they mistreated you. And start looking at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what he has done for us. You know, down here I just have this uh, couple of sheets of paper. And, and maybe these are, let's say, two different individuals that have uh, wronged me. 
maybe mistreated me, okay? You know, this person over here is just kind of nagging all the time. They're always there just, you know, going, oh, what, why, why did you do that, Marcus? Why did you do that, Pastor? Why didn't you do this, Pastor? And like, and, you know, and, and maybe not even for any right reasons. And this one, you know, maybe not as much, but what they did do was terrible. You know, almost ruined my reputation, therefore. You know, I'm going, yeah, they deserve, I'm not going to do anything with them. I'm going to be done with them. But see, if I just look at them and how they've mistreated me, the place that you actually have to start looking at is who I once was. Because this is how we, there's so many black marks on this and check marks, this is how we were before God. There was not even one stitch of good in us. And what did God do for us? Right? He fully, fully forgave us. You know, so you always have to remember that. Or maybe it's something like this. Maybe someone's wrong to you and everything. And you're going, no, I, I'm going to hold on to that. No, the Lord says, look at what I've done for you. This is an opportunity for you to worship me. Do to them as I have done for you. And again, this is not full forgiveness to someone that is wrong. You say, okay, well, I'll take maybe one of these check marks off. There we go. No. Completely forgive them. It's a whole new day. What empowers us to do that? By looking at Jesus, who took us uh, completely black and made us completely white in his robe of righteousness. I just want to read to you a parable here in uh, Matthew chapter 18 that says the exact same thing. It says this, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother uh, when he sins against me up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And he began the settlement, at, uh, as he began to make settlements, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, a debt he could never pay. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children, and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. A debt he could never pay. But his master was merciful and canceled his debt. Didn't make a payment plan. He canceled his debt and let him go. But then his response, but when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, like a day's wage. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had, just as I had on you? You know, so again... You know, uh, there's a lot of times uh, maybe opportunities to take out revenge. No, maybe it's an opportunity to, to worship the Lord. And again, uh, a lot of times, like if uh, someone who has wronged me is standing right here and everything, and I'm looking at everything that he's done against me or she's done against me and everything, I'm going, you really have it coming to you? I have to look past them and remember Jesus. I'm going, yeah, that's right. You forgave me. Makes it a lot easier, right? Makes it so much easier. But our sinful man continues to preach. Every time someone wrongs us, it's our opportunity to take revenge. But we know that we are his children. We are his forgiven children. Maybe it's a wonderful opportunity to worship our, our gracious God. Again, our salvation is complete. And our, our thankful lives, those are always a work in progress. But I pray that we continue to become more and more mature and forgive as God has forgiven us. Amen.
Please stand. Uh, may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Let us now confess our Christian faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, while we depend on you for all things, we especially need your help for the most difficult things you would have us do, such as loving our enemies. Help us to do so by fixing our eyes on the sacrifice of your Son. We were your enemies when Jesus reconciled us to you by his death on the cross. In view of his mercy, we ask you to show your kindness to our enemies Keep them from harming us, but also move their souls out of harm's way by granting them repentance. Let them join us in relying on your grace that all of us may be reconciled to you and one another through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And gracious Lord, healer of diseases, we praise you for blessing uh, Channing Pompa with recovery from his long battle with COVID-19. We give thanks that you have provided both physical and spiritual strength in this time of affliction, continue to empower uh, Channing to glorify your name each day. In your name we pray this. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. We give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. 
He is the incarnate Word conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you and your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. Depart in peace.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. Again, uh, good evening uh, to all of you. So happy to have you here. I'm sure that all of you will enjoy the nice weather uh, tomorrow, up to maybe 50. And I think we're supposed to get 6 to 10 inches on uh, Monday and Tuesday and everything. So, but... We're halfway through the winter. We're over the hill there anyways. But but uh, just a, a couple of announcements. And again, uh, we have our new format. This is what you can take home with you and everything with all the things that are uh, taking place uh, at Emmanuel within the next few weeks. But our um, Men of the Outdoors Sportsman Breakfast, uh, that's going to be uh, taking place uh, not uh, on Saturday, March 5th. If you would like to order a ticket right now, there's a, a booth right out there. You could do that, but it's uh, always a great event, and there's also some more details. If you uh, go and turn uh, the page, uh, the third paragraph, it tells you a lot more about what's all going to be taking place on that Saturday. And then uh, just uh, the, the final announcement again, uh, this Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday, we start uh, another session of Starting Point, or what we formerly known as Life with God. And again, uh, it answers so many questions. It's a great refresher course, but again, this is an opportunity to maybe think of uh, one of your friends who maybe has questions or doesn't really know what Jesus has done for them as well. And uh, the best way to kind of get them is, hey, I'm going to this. Would you like to come? I think you'd benefit. I always benefit every time I go through it. You know, and, and again, just getting, him, getting them here. And uh, the Word does everything else. All we can do is plant and water, but only God can make it grow. But again, it's uh, really neat to see the transformation of those that were very skeptical, and that at the end they're going, oh, that's the last lesson. You know, uh, so again, so think of uh, your family and friends that uh, maybe uh, haven't heard about Jesus or don't really know uh, that much about Jesus and what Jesus has done for them too. So again, that uh, uh, begins this coming Tuesday, uh, starting at 6.30 in the community room. And the other nice thing, though, this will also be on Facebook Live. So if you're saying, I just can't get to church and everything at the community room, you can actually watch it on Facebook Live as well and uh, participate uh, that way. So I uh, hope to see many of you in person. hope to see many of you also online with uh, a lot of your friends. Those are all my announcements I have for you tonight. You take care. God bless all of you. And let us take this time to greet those who are sitting next to us.